welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway. I'm taking you back to the reign of King Henry VIII today. For on this day in Tudor history, on the night of the 30th and 31st of May, 1533, as part of the celebrations for Queen Anne Boleyn's coronation, which was scheduled for the 1st of June, 18 men were created Knights of the Bath. Chronicler Edward Hall records, On Friday, at dinner, served the king all such as were appointed by his highness to be Knights of the Bath, which, after dinner, were brought to their chambers, and that night were bathed and shriven according to the old usage of England. And the next day, in the morning, the king dubbed them according to the ceremonies thereto belonging, whose names ensueth the Marquis of Dorset, Sir William Windsor, the Earl of Derby, Sir Francis Weston, the Lord Clifford, Sir Thomas Arundel, the Lord Fitzwater, Sir John Huddleston, the Lord Hastings, Sir Thomas Poynings, the Lord Monteagle, Sir Henry Saville, Sir John Mordaunt, Sir George Fitzwilliam, the Lord Vox, Sir John Tyndall, Sir Henry Parker, Sir Thomas Germain. A record in letters and papers adds further names. Mr Corbett, Mr Wyndham, John Barclay, Richard Verney of Penley, Robert Whitney of Gloucestershire. Major General Sir George Younghusband, in his book The Tower from Within, describes this traditional coronation ceremony in relation to the coronation of King Henry IV, when 46 men were created Knights of the Bath. He writes that 46 baths were arranged in one of the halls of the White Tower. Each bath had a canopy over it and was filled with warm water and draped with clean sheets. The 46 knights bathed and then the king led a procession into the hall. The king then approached each knight still in his bath and dipped his finger into the bath water and made the sign of the cross on the knight's bare back. While he did this, the king said, You shall honour God above all things. You shall be steadfast in the faith of Christ. You shall love the king, your sovereign Lord, and him and his right defend to your power. You shall defend maidens, widows and orphans in their rights and shall suffer no extortion as far as you may prevent it and of as great honour be this order unto you as ever it was to any of your progenitors or others. When he'd done this to all 46 knights, King Henry IV processed out of the hall. The knights then dried themselves off and were put to bed in beds with rich hangings, which had been placed behind their baths. After they had rested for a while, they were summoned to rise by the curfew bell of the bell tower. Their esquires helped them dress as monks in long brown woolen cassocks with cows. Then they processed into St. John's Chapel as music played. Their new helmets, armour, swords and spurs had been arranged around the high altar. And before these, each knight knelt in devotion and watched his armour all night. So that's what happened at Henry IV's coronation in 1399. And it gives us a good idea of what took place on the night of the 30th of May, 1533. Of course, it would have been King Henry VIII as a monarch dubbing the knights and not Queen Anne Boleyn. Also on this day in Tudor history, three years later, on the 30th of May, 1536, Henry VIII married his third wife, Jane Seymour. And you can find out all about that in last year's video, which I'll give you a link to. Thank you for joining me today. You can subscribe by clicking that button there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live. And you can, of course, give me a like and leave a comment. I'll be back tomorrow. See you then. Bye bye.